Hey guys, I am DC, your, 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 and your host of Barside Jive Live. It is Tuesday. That's right. It's Tuesday, August 6th. Right? Free? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. All right. Is it, are you sure? <laughs> you want to check it? No, it's the 6th. Okay, we always get confused on our dates around here, folks. And it is time for another Tuesday night show here at the Vocal Media Studios, studio number one in Dallas, Texas. We got a great lineup for you tonight. We got some really good stuff. You know, this show happens at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for all you folks not in Central Standard Time every freaking Tuesday. And this fe- this show features some of the very best cover and tribute bands in the country, and I'm not kidding. We've got some really great people that do this show. Um, I want to remind you that you can download my shows on iTunes Now, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And if you're listening to this show as a podcast, you can also watch it by going to vocalnow.com, and you can look for the vocal live image on your phone just to the uh, scroll to the right past uh, the zoo and Fuzzbox, and you'll see the vocal live image. Click on it, and you'll come right into the show right now. And uh, after the fact, you can always go to the Barside Jive folder in the entertainment section and watch any of our previous shows. So, oh, one more thing. You can go to my YouTube channel, Barside Jive Live in YouTube, and watch all the archived material that we have done because it's all there. I want to remind you that this show is sponsored by the zoo. Rawr. (laughs) (laughs) I can't make an elephant noise. I'm sorry. (laughs) Rawr. The world's best rock and can be streamed 24-7, 365. You know, I love the zoo because it's classic. It's it's the stuff. It's the deep cuts, B side, last song on the album. The stuff you typically don't hear on the other radio stations, and you don't have to put up with all those blasted commercials. So check out the zoo, vocalnow.com, and it's always vocal with a K. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. That K is really critical because you won't get there without it. And it is time for Jay. <laughs> Jay. Jay. Whoosh. Bum, 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 well, that wasn't very funny. But uh, thanks, guys, for the intro. And I've got breaking news. Uh, this one is all about the couple that was called out for their trashy wedding invite, jam packed with swear wo- words. Or words, words. When it comes to your special day, many couples want to make their wedding unique and memorable. Often putting a little personal spin on things such as decor and music and invitations. But not all couples think things through when it comes to being original. Sometimes they go a little bit too far, which we know nothing about on this show. One couple is being totally shamed all over the internet for their trashy wedding invitation that came packed with multiple swear words, Brie. The in- <laughs> it's not my wedding invitation. <laughs> not yet. The, 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 Let's clarify, everybody. <laughs> the invitation was shared to the Facebook group, That's It, I'm Wedding Shaming, and received a ton of hate mail the front of the invite reads hey fuck face <laughs> i don't know what this is as you know we got fucking engaged and now we've got to plan a fucking wedding you're so fucking amazing you made the cut so are you fucking coming Fuck yes, fuck no, or fuck you. Wow. Please arrive at 3.30 p.m. or 4 p.m. for a garden ceremony at our house. 
and all of you can fuck off at 11.30 p.m. because we are out of there. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Very nice. Um, the rest of the invitation provides details such as directions, hotel accommodations, and the menu. Um, that is titled Shit You Need to Know. <laughs> okay. We're going to stop there because we're going to totally change this show from a... PG-13 to X. Okay, people online thought that the humor was nowhere to be found and instead thought this was incredibly tacky and trashy. While it may seem funny to you, I mean to them, imagine your grandparents opening up this wedding invitation and seeing all of these swear words. You'll have (laughs) soap in your mouth for the rest of your life. You know, one time when I was like probably fourth grade, fifth grade, I said some words that I shouldn't have said, and my mother did wash my mouth out with soap. Dial. Dial soap. It was pretty nasty. So never again did I let my mother hear those words come out of my mouth. Did you ever get your mouth washed out with soap? I think I did once, but that was always one of my favorite scenes in a Christmas story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great movie. Yes. Great movie. Christmas story is a great movie. I mean, it's a classic. Yeah. I yeah. love it. And when he has to get his mouth washed out with soap. I love it. Yes. So, oh, yes. fudge. Yes. Yes. And I love the I love the, the, the leg lamp, the dad with the yep. leg lamp. That was, oh, <laughs> precious. Precious movie. I love it. Guys, on this day in rock history, the Beatles released the soundtrack to Help, with seven of its 14 songs featured in the band's new color film. One of the non-film songs featured on the album is Yesterday, the most covered song in history. Guns N' Roses on this day saw Appetite for Destruction finally reach number one on this date, more than a year after its release. Neil Young issued his emotional tribute to Kurt Cobain on this day, Sleeps with Angels, while Tom Petty released She's the One. The latter served as the soundtrack for a film of the same name, written and directed by actor, producer, writer, and director Edward Burns, who played a great role in Saving Private Ryan. I love that movie. Saving Private Ryan, great movie. Oh my gosh, great movie. And Edward Burns was had a great role. I just loved it. The Small Faces began their well-respected career with the debut single "What You Gonna Do," a number fourteen UK hit. Ian Samwell wrote the lyric to match music already in place by Steve Marriott and Ronnie Lane, and Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler. Just love Steven Tyler. He fell off a stage, a mishap, serious enough that Aerosmith had to cancel the rest of the tour. He was hospitalized with head and neck injuries and later admitted to being a little high at the time. (laughs) Go figure. Happy birthday to Vincent John Cusano, born on this day in 1952, better known by his stage name as Vinny. Vincent, an American guitarist and songwriter. He is a former member of KISS. We're skipping that because that really sucks. But I can do that because I'm the host. If I don't like it, I ain't got to talk about it. Uh, Let's see. I don't like that either. I don't like that either. I'm done. The news is over, guys. (laughs) So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, my segment. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed my segment. And I think coming up next, Bree, I think coming up next is uh, you. Really? Yeah. think so? Let's introduce you properly. Yeah, let's do it, Jay. (laughs) Take it away, Jay.
Welcome, Bree, to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. Gosh, it's so great to see you again. I'm I'm glad you enjoy seeing me. It's, I enjoy seeing you too. It's been a whole week. It has been a whole week. Wow. Or well, less than a week. Thursday. It, yeah. Did it go by fast or slow for you? Um, probably super slow, just because this heat has me just oh, yeah. miserable. Yeah, so. it's horrible. Yeah, it was really high today. The cold front's gone, and now the heat wave continues. Did um, did you get moved? I did. Did you? I'm not unpacked, but I oh, moved. Got boxes so. in the garage. Oh yeah, I've got everything. Everything. Do you have a lot of cool furniture? Uh, I had a really cool bar piece that I sold. Really? So I'm in the, I'm in the works of trying to figure out a new cool bar piece for this house. I'm looking for an old looking bar, like an old wood, like cool looking, scrolly looking. I posted one. Did you see I did one? see it. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for something yeah. like that. For a new show that we're looking at doing, so. Well, I all my booze is literally in plastic bins sitting <laughs> where a pool table used to be. So wow. <laughs> that's wow. that's my life. And I right bet now. you got lots of booze. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the heaviest thing. I think that was heavier than any of the furniture we wow. moved was all the bins of liquor. <laughs> so. Wow! Wow! <laughs> well, speaking of booze, yes. What's going on in the world of booze? Well, uh. Since on Tuesdays we are talking about beer and wine, I'm kind of doing a little mixture today of something that's going on in the industry and some people may have seen at their local liquor store, even in bars. Mm. Um, But basically there's been a lot of cross promoting and if you're not, you know, in it about like marketing and stuff, but this is what a lot of the big name companies are doing is usually you know you'd say like oh i'm a beer drinker i'm a whiskey drinker blah 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 you have one or the other well now they're trying to make you do everything and go after everyone at once and so it's getting kind of crazy but they're doing it with a purpose uh so like you and your cup over there that specifically uh what he's drinking is is actually a vodka um well it's made by a vodka company and it is infused with botanicals like a gin would be but because uh, it's a lower proof after the distillation process it actually doesn't qualify as a vodka anymore but the calorie content is lower than a glass of wine wow so a lot of people are referring to it as diet vodka um diet vodka vodka. so really their serve is just to pour that in either water or uh club soda and they're going after the more health conscious, which we talked about here and right, some stuff. Right, because we, we are healthy conscious right. here. Yeah. But yeah. The, the big thing that people or the companies are doing right now is cans. Um, you know, before you'd walk into a liquor store and you'd have to buy an entire bottle of whiskey and all the mixers and hope you go home and make something right and that it tastes decent. Well, now you've got what we talked about earlier on the show is called RTDs, uh, ready to drink, Mm. which has increased in popularity by a couple hundred percent uh, over this last year with things like the famous White Claw that we got you on on the show. Right. (laughs) But now you can get anything from vodka sodas to old fashions in a can. Um, A big thing that I'm seeing, you know, in my you know, job itself is things like wine in a can. You know, the big joke used to be box wine, but now it's in a can. Uh, so they're going after consumers for convenience and portability. Um, instead of a bucket of beer, you can literally buy a bucket of canned rosé at a lot of bars. Wow. Um, so I think it's really something interesting to watch in the market and yeah. check out. And yeah. I think, and it's it's great for especially people at home that if you don't want to go commit to an entire bottle of booze and mixers that you can find something you like and so it's more cost effective for a consumer i think sure, right and especially because a lot of companies are offering like mixed variety packs of different cocktails and things and it right. varies from low calorie more quote unquote diet booze to some that have more sugars and mixers and stuff in it so i think it's something to definitely watch right awesome yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, I'm totally down. You know, a bunch of canned booze and some velvet tacos, and I'm good. 
Right. And I, I think the easiest way to think about it is it's really it's really inventing the will. It's taking something like a Zima or like a hard lemonade. Yeah. And they're just putting it in cans. Right. And they're just marketing it completely differently. And right. it's just taking off. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, huge. I told you about going over to Diggs the other day and and uh, and they're ordering White Claw now. It's just, right. it's just crazy. I was at... Um, the Blink-182 and Lil Wayne concert this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I had more guys ask me where they could get White Claws really? than girls. So wow. it's definitely taking over. Yeah. And yeah, it's fad. Yep. But yeah, so I think if you guys have something really cool that you'd like us to try, um, send me a message on Instagram at it's the tipsy gypsy because we totally love to like taste test some things. Uh, we've done like some pre-made cocktails from like our buddies at On The Rocks that sent us some cool stuff. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, some pre-made stuff. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I have two events for y'all to check out this week that I think are pretty cool. Two? Two. Two events. Two. Ooh. Yes. Have you, I know you're kind of like living my neck or old neck of the woods now. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to Chef Point Cafe? No. Okay. Well, it's in Watauga. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an old gas station. Really? But this like awesome chef took over it and serves like amazing dishes. Um, it's on 377? I believe it is on 377. Really? Yes. Uh, wow. They're they're more known for their Bloody Mary. Um, it's $27, I believe. But when you order your Bloody Mary, they give you a beer to drink while you wait for it to be made because it takes so long to get made. It's like an awesome in-house fresh Bloody Mary, but then it also comes with chicken wings, sliders, waffle fries, oh, shrimp, yeah. all that stuff. So it's yeah. basically a meal and a drink for $27, right. Right. but I completely recommend it. However, this week, um, so that's a great place, they're having a bacon week. And so they're doing bacon inspired dishes, but also bacon inspired cocktails for the week. So I think it's something cool to go check out there. Okay. Yes. What's the name of it again? It's called Chef Point Cafe. Chef Point Cafe. Like I said, when you pull up, it's a gas station. Literally, there's still like a little convenience store part in it where you really? can buy gum and cigarettes and whatever. Wow. <laughs> it's, wow. It's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, the food's really good. Um, wow. The bread pudding's really good too. Um, and then my other event is, since we're in Texas, everyone loves their barbecue and I talk a lot about like barbecue events. Right. Well, in smack dab in the middle of Dallas and Fort Worth this weekend, they are having a burnt ends and beer pairing. I love burnt ends. Right? Burnt ends are my favorite. Right. That favorite. is like everybody's That's favorite. The best part of the meat is the burnt right. end. I'm telling you. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm no, I'm I'm I, I'm yeah. So Hurtado Barbecue is pairing with um, the local brewer in Arlington, Legal Draft Beer Company. Oh, yeah, I like those people. Yeah. yeah, so they're doing that this Saturday. I'm telling you about it now because they were, they're only going to be doing enough burnt ends for people who have tickets, oh. so you have to buy the tickets in advance. Oh. So don't show up there Saturday without a ticket thinking you're going to get some burnt ends because it's not happening. I got surgery mm -hmm. on Friday. <sighs> I well, probably won't get to go. Well, just saying, everyone else, you know, Go. But you're getting three three beers uh, to pair with your burnt ends. So buy your tickets now and go check it out. And uh, check it out. Legal yeah. draft. The beer. legal draft beer company in Arlington. It's the only so. place in Arlington you can drink legally at legal draft beer. <laughs> that is not an accurate statement, but we'll go. <laughs> Sounds <with> it. good. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, so again, <laughs> follow me on Instagram at It's the Tipsy Gypsy or check me out on the website at It's the Tipsy Gypsy dot com. Um, and we'll talk about all this fun stuff. I also have some cocktail recipes and everything you guys are looking for from past shows, and all that good stuff. And of course, send us messages if you have some awesome, um, especially local stuff that you'd like for us to try and talk about on the show, because I love hitting up our local places. So. Awesome. Yes. Bree, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you so much for that. And I love the drinks. Good. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait till next week. I just can't wait. Because, like, what was this last one I had? 
Um, the one you're <laughs> sipping on right now. This one it's going. Oh, this one. This was actually Smirnoff's brand new um, watermelon and mint zero sugar line. Oh, really? They just came out with it. They need so. to send me a case. Okay, we'll get on that. Yeah, well, they need to send me a oh, case. Oh, and before I let you guys go, next week on Tuesday, you need to tune in, especially for wine lovers, because I'm going to give you guys a code to have wine sent to your house and get like $25 off. Really? Yes. So A code? A code. Wow. So you guys you got to tune, tune in, in for the code. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Hey, All right, Jay. <laughs> Is that the you got a you got an outro now? I got an outro now. Hey. Yeah. Wow, cool. I think I did rather well putting I that like together. It. I like it. It's fitting. All right, Bree. It's time for. Guys, I want to welcome Adina to the show. She is a European painter. You wouldn't know she's European until she starts talking. And then you can see that she is European. She's a painter and photographer living and working in Dallas, Texas. Her work has been featured in Art in America, Art Expo New York, and Art Monaco Monte Carlo and Spectrum Miami, Florida, as well as galleries and private collections in the United States, in France, in Italy, in Spain, Germany, Holland, <laughs> Portugal, Romania, and Israel. Additionally, her work has been collected by corporations such as Ali Beth Allman and Associates, Hilton Hotels, Inc., Trammel Crow Company, Remax, Forest Park Medical Center, Destiny Surgical Center, Spinsky Technology, Spinchy. Spinchy Technologies, and others. She was born in 1970. Oh, come on. She was born in 1998 <laughs> in Bucharest, Romania. Yes. Adina's early work influence consisted in the fauvism of of Henry Matisse and later identifying with the School of New York abstract expressionist current. Raised in a family of artisans originally from Transylvania, she was educated in the practice of arts and artisan crafts from an early age. She finds her inspiration in nature and the time spent at her family country homes. Learning the creation of decorative objects from earth-based ingredients. Situated on ancient grounds with breathtaking natural beauty. She grew up surrounded by myths and by legends. Wisdom, teachings, and art. Childhood memories, the light colors and textures are expressed in her paintings and her photography. Adina's work conveys the essence of a golden era in which she relates to her past and taps into the future through the filter of a perpetual now presence. Light, emotion, symbolism are transformed into color and dimension. Artist connection with the eternal source of life, light, and love stands beyond time and material. So let's welcome Adina to the show. Hey, Adina. Hey, thank you. How are you? I'm I'm, I'm super excited to be here tonight. Yeah, thank you. we're excited to be. We're excited that you're here too. You know, we just started this segment uh, just a few weeks ago, and uh, we uh, so we haven't been doing it, doing it very long, but we're very, very excited for you to be here. Um, I. Uh, you know, Instagram's been a big resource 
uh, for me finding artists to come up here, you know, as guests on the show. And, and I'm very thankful that you had a, a great uh, Instagram account. And I've just, like, looked at your photos and the galleries and all the work that you're doing. And um, so I know you got started at a real early age, right? Yes, I started to paint as a child. Right. And, um, you know, artists are born artists. Right. It just takes a while uh, to to understand who you are and to find your path. Um, but I've been always... Um, uh, art is part of my life. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> right, right. Well, did your parents encourage you when you were a child? Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, so my family, being artisans, are, again, they were making a living creating um, art and decorative objects. And um, since I was born in Romania, and I would say it was in 78, 1978, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I believe in immortal soul and life, so it doesn't really matter. Well, well you, know? I could, you were frowning, so I was like trying to help you out a little bit. But it's uh, fine, it's fine. Um, well, I you're, appreciate you're, it. Though, you're so. still younger than us. I will always be young at heart. So, um, you know, it it was a time. It was so Romania is in Eastern Europe. Right. Uh, in '78, we still had the communist regime. It was very hard for artists, especially. If for, uh, you know, especially to, if you were not part of the system, um, you know, my parents didn't think about me having an art career and it was a very um, hard time for everyone at that time in Romania. So we just, later on, we just, um, we were just learning, you know, the new, in, in 89, I don't know if you guys are familiar a little bit with Eastern European history, so in 1989, I was 11 years old, and that's when we had the revolution, and um, they they basically shot the dictator. They changed the regime from communism to democracy, but of course, something of that proportion doesn't happen overnight. It took at least 25 years, in my opinion, to really start having a real democracy in Romania. Um, so it was a very um, chaotic and I would say even dark time for, for Romanians. Right. So my parents encouraged me to learn about money, economy, finances, and um, entrepreneurship. So um, I uh, I did that as a good girl. You know, I studied economy. I have a bachelor degree in hospitality, marketing, and management. Wow! And I became an, um, almost an expert in managing luxury properties in hospitality. Wow! But I never gave up on painting. Um, and learning about art and uh, photography and art history and history and I I feel like I am um, a, <laughs> a huge library of uh, everything culture. That's my personality. Right, right. Are you working as a full time artist now, Adina? Yes, I am working as a full time artist. I have a studio gallery in Addison at Addison Circle. It's very easy to find me. I'm really literally at Addison Circle, right uh, uh, by the, the park where all the big festivals are held. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I work with several other galleries. Currently here locally in Dallas, my uh, artwork uh, can be seen and purchased at the uh, Ellison Valencia Gallery in Bishop Arts District. They are located at 508 North Bishop Avenue. Okay. It's really on the main main street in that really beautiful. That's my favorite place in town, right. Bishop Arts District. Right. Um, and um, also at uh, Storgio Showroom, luxury furnishing showroom in um, Dallas Market Center. That's more accessible to interior designers. Right, right, right. And some other places, but um, basically there are three main uh, locations in Dallas and uh, I always have shows outside of uh, Texas as well outside of the country as well there are several shows in the making um, hopefully soon one in Stuttgart in Germany another one in Barcelona Spain and another one in Vancouver Canada Wow there's a lot of opportunities as far as international market it's just that I need to put the time and the resources to to get there Right, right. Well, when we um, 
when we edit your show and and post it on YouTube, we'll make sure we include some of your samples of some of your artwork. Sure, thank you. I appreciate that. it. Yeah, you have some beautiful beautiful pieces that uh, you see, you had sent me. Um, yes, the the best um, to keep up with the new work because I paint every day. <laughs> Um, I always post on Facebook and on Instagram, especially Instagram, as a matter of fact. Uh, so my Instagram is adina.art. That would be A-D-I-N-N-A dot art. And I have the same name on Facebook as well, my Facebook page, adina.art. Right. And my website, adina.art. It's always adina.art. Right, right. Yeah, you got a really cool Instagram page. Now, when you first started uh, finding an interest in art, did that? How did it uh, expose itself? Was it through drawing or painting or? Um, it was always painting. I started with mm. watercolor painting mm -hmm. um, because I most of my childhood I grew up um, with my grandparents in in the countryside and basically sort of lived on a ranch. So that's why I think Texas is very close to my heart because I can have the country living and the city li living in one place, just like I'm used to. Right. Um, I've always been fascinated by color and uh, light um, and patterns, but color and light are my main um, my main ex modalities of expression, I would say, because okay. it's all about emotion. And um, now after so many years of uh, practicing art or being, being a professional artist, I um, totally identify myself with abstract expressionism. And uh, as abstract expressionism is, is, it really talks to your heart and it talks to your subconscious. Um, compared to realistic art, realistic art has to do with rationality. <laughs> you look at something and immediately your brain assigns it a definition and a dimension. Mm -hmm, right. But abstract art is all about a good abstract art piece is all about making you feel something, opening up certain memories, certain feelings, um, certain sensations, and it's, it's very emotional. And um, I must say, it could be also life-changing. How is that? Um, people transform. I have been, and I, I think this is my main um, driving factor into keep painting and keep showing. I've witnessed so many times how people who have the ability to connect to some of my pieces are transformed on an um, emotional, uh, emotional and um, maybe energetical level. Um, it's, a, it's a unique experience that you never forget. Mm. Sometimes, um, I don't like to talk about art as therapy, but sometimes when uh, you look at something and it makes you think about something that happened in your past or some memory that um, really changed and influenced your life, it makes you realize certain things about you and um, makes you get to know yourself better. And that is really a changing factor. Wow. Once you understand certain things about yourself, because you know all this, um, our existence is all about self-knowledge. The more we know who we are, the more we understand each other, our thinking, our behavior, our choices. Um, that's what changes perception and automatically changes your reality. Mm. Mm -hmm. Dina, is your family all in the States now? As a matter of fact, no, <laughs> I only have my kids here. Uh, my family is, is in Romania. Oh, okay, still. Yeah, yeah. It's in Eastern Europe, and uh, they're very happy there. Are they, they only want to visit, that's all. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow, wow, and you yeah. found it as your new home. For me, yes, is a is my is my home here now. Um, I, I, I've been here for over 15 years now. I'm here because I'm choosing to be here. <laughs> Right. I truly believe I am the creator of my own life, and I believe this goes for every one of us. Um, I uh, I realize that every time I go back to Bucharest, after about two weeks, 
I'm just finding myself saying, oh, I miss home. I want to go home. <laughs> and then I realized, hold on a second. I thought I am home, but no, my home is Dallas. So right, right. Yes, guys, I'm a Texan now. I'm an <laughs> implant. <laughs> it's not going to be that easy to get rid of me. So <laughs> y'all. <laughs> y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, like I said, Adina, your work is just very beautiful. And I, I can't wait for people to check it out. Um, and, and again, let's let's talk real quick about where what galleries where they can go to see your artwork. So they can come to my studio gallery. Um, it's Adina is at Addison um, Circle Art Center. The address is one five five two zero Quorum Drive, Addison, Texas, right at the circle. Literally, there's some black awnings. You cannot miss that. Okay. Um, and also, if you are closer to Dallas and Bishop Arts District, you can go to Ellison Valencia Gallery at 508 North Bishop Avenue. And um, if you are an interior designer or you have a commercial business, you can go to Dallas Market Center inside the World Trade Building on 10th floor. It's showroom 10052. It's called Storgio Luxury Furnishings. And you can see over there as well. Or best way, <laughs> you can actually call me, set an appointment with me, and based on what you're looking for, I'll help you identify something that goes, in, you know, eventually if you're remodeling your home or if you're purchasing for your office or something like that, or you, you, you simply are an art lover and you just want to see artwork and talk about art. Um, I would be, I'm always happy to talk about art and about uh, expression. So you can call me at 469. 677-8488 or send me an email at info at adina dot art a-d-i-n-n-a dot art all right ladies and gentlemen you heard it from the source this is adina we're so glad that you could stop by and share a little bit about your story and your art and i hope people see you know we'll go see in your art what i've seen and uh, yeah, maybe you sell a little bit too, right? Yeah, sure, right. why not? Yeah, it's why always not? good, you know. I don't like the starving <laughs> artist thing, so oh, no. I'm not one of the <laughs> no, right, right, right. Happy starving artist. Yeah. Well, you, thank you. I appreciate it. You guys Happy and these, yeah, you know, sure. Well, th you're welcome. And you, you and these musicians, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of times it's a struggle plying your craft to try to make a living at it. But uh, you guys create a lot of beauty, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thanks, Adina. Thank you. Guys, I've got a uh, drummer uh, and the singer of a quick transition here of Rolling Stone tribute, the Stonelys. And I've got what, Brad? And uh, Brad Bartlett uh, is Charlie Watts. And Justin Whitehead is Mick Jagger. And I welcome both you guys to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate You're you're welcome, man. Thank you guys for being here. So, how's uh, how are the Stoneleys? You know, really good. You see, we've, we've kind of gone through a metamorphosis here the last uh, about sixty days. Right. We made a conscious decision. You know, the band's been around for eighteen years. Yeah. A long time. A long time. And you know that we've talked before. And so yeah. Having done this for ten years, the environment in Dallas, Texas, is really changed and we've been able to watch that occur right and so what we made a conscious decision that we wanted to up the game we, we wanted to raise our whole performance what we do to an entirely different level right and so that's why Justin is here um, Justin is our new Mick Jagger we're okay. excited about having him we're excited about the energy the the, the, the things that he brings to the table right to, to you know further you know, make us a real force here in the Dallas market. Because as you right. know, I mean, with Prima Donna, with Just Like Pink, <laughs> with, you know, the, the Motley Crews, the, you know, the Queen for a Days and all that stuff, the bar is up there now. Yeah. And, and it, it's truly an unusual marketplace. It's tribute band heaven, as we like right. to call it. Right, right. And so we want to participate at that level. As you know, we play the A rooms, we play the Lava Cantinas, we play the the Granadas, we right. we play, you know, the Gas Monkeys, we play all the, the top rooms, and we want to bring that level of entertainment of the Rolling Stones. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you, you know, I've been listening to you guys for a long, long time. And, oh, I know. You've been and, so nice. 
And, uh, you know, it was it was so fun holding up the show that time at Lola's, me and you behind your drum kit. <laughs> Uh, we to- we totally held up the whole freaking show. We did this interview. It was hot too. Was Remember hot. that day? God, it was like this we, now. It's over a hundred. We, We're outside. It was burning hot. Brad's oh got this God. amazing past that no one knows. You know the people he's played with, and so I did a little interview backstage with him at Lola's uh, outdoors, the the trailer park, I guess they call it. Before the show, and I don't know what happened, but anyway, we wound up taking for forever and they were waiting on us and uh, we had a, little, a good little chat and got a lot of information out there in fact that that's on my youtube channel uh, barside jive live but but uh, i've known brad a long time and i've been following these guys and listening to them because i love the stones but the the two songs that they play that that i don't get to hear very often live uh are do you know what they are brad well i think one of them is still monkey man yeah, right? yeah, Monkey Man. <laughs> Monkey Man's one, and there's Monkey one Man's. more. You remember? I'm going to say, Can't You Hear Me there Knocking? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> can't You Hear Me yeah, Knocking? Yeah. My favorite two Rolling Stone songs. And uh, and these guys play them both and very well. And so, but I'm, so I'm really excited because uh, you guys have been friends for a long time. So um, uh, tell me a little bit about Justin. Oh, Justin, listen, I'm gonna let Justin talk being the new this. being the new member of the band. It's just, yeah, it's fabulous. Justin, yeah, go. He's tell certainly me. set the bar high for me. I, I guess now I'm in charge of stepping up the game for the entire band. But there you go. I'm really excited about it. Um, I have, uh, you know, obviously a big fan of the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, but also I've seen these guys before and I, I so were you a big fan going back way back in your childhood? Rolling or? Stones. Um, you know, I. I my earliest memory of the Rolling Stones. I mean, I'm sure my parents listened to classic rock, and uh, I mean, I'm not trying to age myself, but this was this was all these stations and classic rock stations by the time I was first listening to them. But my right. first new Rolling Stones um, album that I heard kind of all the way through was Steel Wheels. Oh so yeah, my parents bought that right. on CD. Right. I made a copy to my you know, cassette tape, played it on my tape deck, <laughs> yeah. things like that. So I love that. I love Mixed Emotions and um, Rock in a Hard Place and, and those singles. But, um, but yeah, I've always, I've always loved the Stones and, and right. that kind of stuff. And I just, I think um, Mick Jagger, you know, he's the, he's the gold standard as far oh, as yeah. leading men um, mm. in a live concert. And I'm just, yeah. I'm looking forward to trying to achieve something resembling yeah. what he does because that's that sets the bar pretty high so it's a yeah. it's a constant challenge and it's going to be a lot of fun you know i heard uh an interview with him and he was talking about during on their tours he he runs about eight miles a day <laughs> seriously yeah. eight miles a day doesn't surprise me i'm yeah. i'm i'm approaching two miles of running per week right yeah. now so <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i'm inching yeah, my way up there yeah. trying to get in shape but oh um, mick set the jar set the bar high didn't he yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Especially at his age, too. Yeah, isn't that amazing, though? Having that heart stuff, mm-hmm. and then he's just oh, back yeah. on stage yeah. so quick. It's great. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, his recovery time is so minimal because he's in such good shape. Yep. You know? So, um, you guys, uh, let's see now. T- uh, Brad, uh, identify everybody in the band now. So, um, obviously, Justin Whitehead is Mick Jagger. Right. Um Jay Spence, you're good friends with Jay. Jay, oh yeah, Jay's awesome. Jay is our Keith Richards, fabulous right. guitar player. Great guy, yeah. Very well known here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yeah. Great guitar player. Uh, <laughs> our Ron Wood comes from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and drives here for every performance. Yeah. Don Dobbs. Yeah. Uh, on bass is boy the one and only John McCormick, Man. Southwest Airline pilot. He, I know. <laughs> just he's Bill. He's got he's, the look. He's why he is. He's he's Wyman. He, yeah. he the dude. He plays like him. He he acts like him. He even 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 off stage, the dude reminds me so much he of does. Bill. You're exactly right. Wow. On keyboards is Gene Perry, a well-known uh, Dallas musician as well. Excellent player. Right. Has it down perfectly. Right. And then on saxophone we have Mike Johnson, the one and only Mike Johnson. Who's, yeah. Who's obviously another really well-known musician. Right. here in the Dallas area. I think the other thing, too, that, that is so great about the Stoneleys, yes, it's good players, but we've really gone to school with 
the equipment as well as the whole catalog of the library of the Stone Songs. Uh, equipment, you know, people say, well, we're a tribute band. Well, if you're a Stones tribute band, what that means is, you know, at my on my kit, it's it is a 1958 Gretsch right. round badge kit, right? You know, three ply. Right. But for the guitar players, they're using the vintage tweed twin, not the twin reverbs, the twins, the 40 watt ones. <laughs> uh, they're using the 52, 53 Telecasters. They're using the 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 you know the 335 black one, just like Keith has. They're using the the Stratocasters and, and the exact guitars that Ron Woods uses. Right. Uh, you know, the so, real so, deal, right? Yeah. Uh, the bass player uses an Ampeg bass amp, obviously, just like what, what Bill Wyman does in an Ampeg bass. So if you're going to I've got sound, my black Nike Air Force. Absolutely. So. Right there. Oh, well, the black yeah. Nikes, oh, well. I mean, look at Mick. He's always got them on. <laughs> That's right. And, and so How funny. It, it's one of those things where if, if you're going to try to emulate that sound, right. which if you're a tribute, that's right. what you're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Then you got to do it with the right equipment, and the right. Stonelys pride themselves on that. Mm -hmm. and I think the second thing is is that, you know, we know right now the Stones are on tour right in the U.S. Right. And they just were, you know, at Houston. They were just in New Jersey last week. Right. It, it is a situation, plain and simple, where because they've been around 53 years, we've talked about this before, D.C., the catalog is huge. Right. And we're one of the few tribute bands in Dallas, Texas, that can play three and a half, four hours and not repeat a song. Right. Because, the A, the catalog is so big. B, we've been together for so long. <laughs> Plus, we love the music, and there's plenty of it to do. Right. Oh, yeah. If yeah. we need to do a 45-minute Midnight Rambler to stretch for time, we can right. do Yeah. <laughs> right. Great song, by the way. I love Midnight Rambler. It's a great song. Not, and It's not my top two, but it's probably four. <laughs> probably number four. No, I, uh, yeah, it's a long-ass song, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to hear you guys uh, play again. It's been a while for me uh, hearing you guys, but I know that uh, you play it uh, – we play close to me at Tolbert's occasionally. That's right. we, we've got one coming up in November. Oh, do you? Beginning of November. You'll okay. see that. That's going to be a big, big show. You've got to be there for that one. Okay. That'll be big. Okay. And we'll have special guest artists like we do, as you will Oh, know. yeah, right. Yeah, we've got a special guest artist at that show. Uh, Justin, you got to come see this. Okay, yeah. I'm I haven't heard him yet. It's yeah, yeah. amazing, okay? Yeah, You're I haven't heard him amazed. yet. It'll be a real treat. So, so that, that will be a treat. <laughs> And, you know, we always love Tolbert's. It's, it's, you know, yeah. it's our watering hole. You yeah, know that. It, it's it is. Our home away from it home. is. I mean, I love the other venues. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've explored so much, and, and uh, you know, Lava and Lola's, mm -hmm. and, you know, I've, they're all really have their own unique personalities, and I love them. But, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, Tal Tolbert's, Tolbert's, Kathleen, I'm sorry, Tolbert's. <laughs> she, uh, she got on to me one time. Oh, for okay. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, that that place has just been so close to home that you know I've always just considered it kind of home base. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to you know, kind of hard to move away from it. But uh, yeah, and the and the sound's always really good. It is, sure. at least from our standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's for us too, same way. Yeah, yeah. So what you guys got coming up as far as gigs? Just real quick, we have a couple. We have one here in August. Uh, another watering hole that that we've gone to quite a bit, which is. Uh, the Cadillac Pizza out in McKinney. Yeah, and you know right. it, it's a it's it's kind of a quintessential music place. There's a lot of big name people that play there. Right. It's a lot of fun. It's right. a real casual atmosphere. We enjoy that. That's coming up here, uh, August 23rd. We've got some stuff coming in September and October. Uh, we're not we don't want to spill too much here, but, oh, okay. but DC, but you're such you're such, <laughs> such a great fan of the band. We love you so much, but. You know, we've got some things coming where there will be some multimedia extravaganzas behind oh, us, etc. Nice. So there's some other things that are coming here that, that yeah. we want to we want to make a big show of and premiere those I things can. too. Well, I better get a real invitation to one of those. Uh, I mean, I better get a phone call. <laughs> you know, see what does it say in the Bible? Ask and what, <laughs> and you shall receive. You're darn right. Yeah, I definitely want to know about that when you start doing that. Okay. That would be really cool. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I you know I've always been a big fan of the Stones and uh, and you guys uh, really put it out there always have and I'm looking forward to the looking forward to the continuation of that. 
Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Now, if someone wants to book you guys or they just want to follow you, find out more information, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I think, uh, what is it, Jay? It is Jay, Jay the Spence. main contact, yeah. Jay Spence. I mean, obviously, you can look us up on Facebook, send us a message. We have a I think we have a band yep. email address. We do. Um, we have a band, we have a band website. It's on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Jay Spence has taken over, or Keith Richards, the, the booking of the right, band and that right, type thing. Right, right, right. Um, just know, like Keith did, right? Yeah, just like Keith, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> good call, uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, um, yeah. But, and so, you know, he, he's, he's got an analytical bit to it. We've got a very organized system that we're doing. We've got a calendar now, all kinds of different things. Oh, so cool. It's good. It's awesome. Good. Yeah. Things are moving forward. Things are moving forward. In a good way. Well, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's good to hear. Well, you guys need to check out the Stoneleys if you haven't. They play all over town. They've, uh, they're doing some new cool stuff uh, coming, uh, coming up really quick. So check them out. And uh, uh, you might even bump into me there. So thank you guys so much. Hey, DC, thank you yeah. for having us. It's, oh, just, it's thank been you. so exciting for us. I mean, we've talked about this before, but, yeah. you know, because we've known each other for, what, nine, ten years now yeah, here. To probably. watch, you know, yeah. your, your shows grow and that type of thing, it's just been delightful. I mean, what a homegrown Dallas talent you are. And I'm just proud of you. I'm proud well, of I'm, you. I'm proud to call you a friend. Well, thank you. And I'm, I feel the same way, Brad and Justin. And uh, thank you guys for what you do because you're definitely giving back because we uh, we love our stones, and we don't want to pay six hundred dollars for a seat and, <laughs> and and sit a quarter of a mile back away from the stage. So, hey, before I uh, get into my uh, close here, would you guys either sign or draw or do whatever? Uh, make yourself at home on the uh, canvas there for me. Yeah. Just pull it over beside you. Just pull an yeah. edge of it over. Adina will share it with you. She yeah. she looks kind of mean sometimes, but she really won't. She <laughs> oh really my. she won't bite but, but, at all. But if you look, and she, if she does, you won't bleed bad. You see, she's got some artistic you're asking talent. Some, yeah, you're asking us to draw in front of an artist. Safe. Yeah, I'm drawing in front as of an artist. As long as the sun is me, I make stick people. <laughs> I'm gonna try a tongue. Well, I, I, th I thought I'd better throw that out there before we, because uh, you guys will want to rush out of here, all of our guests, just poof, when it's over. Okay, guys, so this next segment is sponsored by the Old Grapevine Cigar and Tobacco Shop, located in historic downtown Grapevine, Texas. And I'm featuring the Upsetter Django tonight. Uh, this is a cigar that you normally don't hear about, uh, probably. The Upsetters is um, it's brought to you by Foundation Cigar Company, owner of 90-plus ratings, utilizing a Caribbean atmospheric herb, herbal, herbal infusion and a rare Jamaican leaf with perfectly aged Nicaraguan uh, leaf. The Upsetter is an infused cigar, which I just love infused cigars, uh, like absolute no other. This top-grade cigar is perfect for special occasions, and no matter how many cigars you have had under your belt, you're sure to find something new and amazing here. Right, Jay? Yes, sir. Okay. So stop by Old Grapevine Cigar and Tobacco Shop. See Denna, Tom, or Kenny and ask them to make a recommendation for you. If you guys are into pipe tobacco, they've got a huge selection of pipe tobaccos. And if you also mention Barside Jive or Barside Jive Live or even DC, you'll get 10% off your purchase. And that's just nothing to ignore. That's just something that you need to enjoy. So uh, take your 10% off by mentioning me or the show. They also... Um, are planning, along with myself, our next Cider and Cigar event, which will be held at Outlaw Cider Company just down the street, about a block and around the corner on Texas Street. Uh, we're going to do this next one, uh, August 23rd. That's a Friday. We're going to do it 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, August 23rd, on the patio at Outlaw Cider. And we've had such a great time at these that we're just going to do one in August. Even though it's usually a little warm in August, we're going to do it anyway. But actually, with the ceiling fans and the patio, that time of the day, it ought to be pretty nice. So come out and hang out and enjoy our company. Uh, for 20 bucks, you get a cigar, a cider, and a raffle ticket 
Uh, I'm not sure what the, the prize is this time, but it's been a Bluetooth uh, smoker. It's been a drone, and it's been a humidor. So check that out. You can buy tickets at Outlaw Cider. You can buy tickets at Old Grapevine Cigar. Or you can get tickets from me, 20 bucks. Now it's, my, it's time for my meme of the week. And there it is. You know, they talk a lot, Jay, about this uh, rush on Area 51. Well, first guy I'm looking for when they storm Area 51 is that dude right there. Uh, At least that's what they say. All right, Jay, did you give me that meme? Just curious. What's up? Did you give me that meme? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you did. Okay, guys, it's time for my final notes. I just love Jay. He's really a good dude. Despite what other people say about him, he's really a pretty good dude. Guys, just a reminder that we've got a show Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Our Tuesday night show is all about covering tribute bands that we feature. We've also got Art Jive Live and have amazing artists like Adina. And then we uh, have our Tipsy Gypsy segment brought to you by Brie Acres. And then on Thursday at 7.30, we do the same thing, except we feature singer-songwriters for about 35, 40 minutes. And then Brie Acres again brings us a beverage during the Tipsy Gypsy segment. So we have two shows a week. Also on Sundays now, I'm doing a rewind where I dig into the archives, going all the way back to 2016 and pull out stuff that I think is interesting or kind of funny. And I throw it out there on Sundays for you. So I hope you're enjoying that. And last but not least, I'm doing a daily segment because I was talked into it, a uh, DC's uh, Daily Dose. And I talk about current events, uh, things that's happened in music on that day, and then, you know, just sometimes just gibberish. So, <laughs> so look for it sometime during the day, every day, on my Facebook page, Barside Jive Live. And you can uh, follow any of my content at youtube.com forward slash Barside Jive Live. Okay, guys. So remember that vocalnow.com is the key is the key to everything vocal. You can go there. Uh, actually, go to your app store and download the app Vocal Now, Vocal with a K. Download it to your phone. And you can listen to the Zoo. You can listen to the Zeep, Deep Cuts. You can listen to the... You can listen to the B-side. You can listen to the last song on the freaking album that you'll never hear on another radio station. And without all those dang commercials, that's right. So listen to the zoo just like we did when we were kids. Right, Brad? That's right. <laughs> so listen to the zoo. You can get it on the app. And so go to vocalnow.com. Also, you can go to barsidejob.com and learn everything you want to know about this show. Uh, whether you create music or some other form of art or let's say you want to advertise or sponsor a show or maybe you just want to leave us a comment for whatever reason it's dc at barsidejive.com dc at barsidejive.com this show today has also been brought to you by hip and hippie hip and hippie is a planet loving company known for its high quality earth friendly 100 percent recyclable candle line, and natural body care products. It's no wonder eco-supporting people love Hip and Hippie, hipandhippie.com. Thanks to Robin, Robin, our photographer today. She can be found on Instagram at photography, Robin G, photography, Robin G on Instagram. Thanks to Jay and Jimmy, our production team. How's it going in there, Jay? Going well. Yeah, you enjoying yourself? <laughs> yeah, I see you're really enjoying that drink as well. <laughs> it's gone. I'll just suck in a little air there. Hey, um, tell me, how's that, you know, that auto thing going for you, the auto switch? Uh, we're getting there, but um, it's actually been pretty smooth these past two shows. So. Why do you think that is, Jay? Um, I can, 100% because of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, let's go to my parting thought, Jay, okay? My parting thought is this, at the end of this life, what really matters is not what we bought, but what we built. Not what we got, but what we shared. Not about our success, but about our significance while we were here. Live a life that matters, live a life of love. And Jay? Yes, Jay, sir. 
I'm going to let you do the honors, okay? Sounds good. Because I don't have the buttons. You're going to do it, right? Give me three. All right. So, guys, we're out of here. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for being a part. Be kind to one another. Keep it real. Keep on rocking. See you next Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. right here on Vogue.